Hi guys! I got a new camera! So I wanted to give you an update on Professor Plucky. So as I talked about previously, I built this prototype guitar robot that has two different ways of plucking the strings. It can either pluck the strings using these kinematic pluckers that move in this visually appealing way or it can pluck the strings with these kind of boring pluckers that don't really visually appear to move at all. And I wanted to know how the movement of this robot affects the way that people interact with it. So my colleague Laura and I invited guitarists to the lab to improvise duets with Professor Plucky. So we put motion capture markers on the guitarists and we also put eye tracking glasses on the guitarist and then we gave them a guitar and we sat them down and we asked them to improvise along with Professor Plucky and they played for a while with the kinematic plucking mechanism and they played for a while with the control pluckers and so just to give you a sense of that this is what that sounds like And so overall, what we found, kind of surprisingly, is that the guitarists don't really like the extra movement of the kinematic pluckers, which is kind of surprising because when people come to just look at the robot, people love the movement. But evidently, when you play guitar with it, it's something of a different story. And what it seems like is that the less experienced guitar players find the movement to be distracting and it makes it more difficult for them to play. Whereas the more experienced guitarists feel more neutrally about the movement, but still they consciously try to ignore it so that they can focus on their own playing. On the other hand, when we interview the guitarists, they can all think of times previously when they were playing guitar with other human guitarists where movement was important, uh, but it seems like the experiences that they recount focus mostly on, I guess, kind of intermittent movement, like making a deliberate cueing gesture, making eye contact with someone at a specific moment, or looking at someone's hands to see what chord they're playing at a specific moment in time. Whereas, by contrast, the guitar robot is kind of always moving continuously and the movement never really changes. And so it seems like that this kind of continual movement by itself isn't really enough because it doesn't really communicate anything specific. Of course, guitarist's preference might not be the whole story because there's at least some theory that suggests that sometimes this kind of distraction is actually good for kind of motor control learning tasks. Like if you kick a football, you shouldn't necessarily be focused on your leg and the mechanics of what you're doing with your body. It might actually be better to think about where the ball is going. And having a guitar robot that's kind of distracting might actually help provide that kind of external focus of attention that you need in these kinds of motor learning tasks. But there's some other kind of interesting results from the study that suggest that people's preferences or what people say their preferences are might not be the whole story because several of the participants failed to notice that the robot was using the kinematic plucking mechanisms in one condition and the control plucking mechanisms in another condition, even though they're visually quite distinct from one another. Uh, some of the participants were actually surprised later when we showed them the difference kind of after the experiment was over. They were surprised that they had missed something that's kind of so visually obvious. It kind of reminds me of that famous psychology experiment where they have people 
watching a video of a basketball game and keeping score and at some point somebody walks into the middle of the court wearing a bear costume and because people are so occupied with keeping score afterwards nobody even remembers having seen the person in the bear costume um, and one of these people who didn't notice the difference was actually staring directly at the respective plucking mechanisms as he was improvising with it. And we know that because he was wearing eye tracking glasses. And what's interesting is that that participant did actually move their body significantly more when the kinematic plucking mechanisms were being used as opposed to the control plucking mechanisms. So it seems like there might be some kind of subconscious thing going on where you subconsciously realize that there is some extra movement but you may not consciously realize it, or if you do consciously realize it, you may not prefer it, but it may still be affecting how you interact with the robot in some way. But either way, my overall takeaway from this experiment is that this kind of continual rotational motion by itself isn't really enough. And what I really need is some kind of plucking mechanism that is able to make a greater variety of different kinds of gestures. And so I reasoned that a three degree of freedom robotic finger or arm or whatever you want to call it would be good for this application. And by three degrees of freedom, I mean that there are three rigid segments connected to one another with joints. And what that means then is at the end of the pick, you can control the X position of the pick, you can control the Y position of the pick, and then independently, you can control the angle of the pick. And this would give the finger more kind of space to explore different kinds of gestures. And mechanically, what this means is that one finger would be able to reach out and pick any of the strings. Um, it would also be able to strum backwards and forward across the string. And because you can control the angle, you would also be able to control the loudness of the plucking or strumming. Because if you hold the pick perpendicularly to the motion and strum, you'll get a relatively loud strum Whereas if you hold the pick at some angle relative to the direction of motion, then you will get kind of a softer strum. And I was also thinking about putting a piece of felt kind of next to the pick on the plucking mechanism, and this would allow the robot then to go down and actually dampen the strings as well as plucking them. So first I built this kind of prototype three degree of freedom finger thing. So this has, you know, three rigid segments connected by joints, and there are gears that transmit movement up to the different joints. And so the way this works is that there are three input gears on the bottom. And if I move just one of those gears, then just that last segment rotates about that last joint. And if I move two of these gears together, then that kind of moves this joint. And then if I move all three gears together, then the whole arm moves and that's kind of the same as rotating around this joint down here. So theoretically, this should be able to reach out and pluck a string. The problem came when I tried to actually connect this to some motors because it's not exactly clear how to transmit the motion of a motor into these input gears on the bottom. So I started building this thing, which has uh, space for three servo motors, and then the rotational motion of the motor is supposed to be transmitted into the finger through these kind of rack and pinion gears. And this is what that looks like with the finger attached to it. The problem with this thing is basically everything. This design is horrible for all of the wrong reasons, and it quickly became clear that this is never, ever, ever going to work. So I think we should just forgive and forget people. Forgive and forget.
So I got some of these linear servo motors, which I thought might be easier to work with rather than these kind of regular rotational servo motors. Uh, they have this rod that projects out of them and you just tell them what position you want the rod to go to and then it just kind of moves there. So you basically control the length of this thing. And I thought these might be easier and more compact for doing the thing that I want to do. And then so I went back to the laser cutter. You know, maybe I should do more of these kind of build montages in my videos. Anyway, so I ended up building this. And as you can see, this is kind of a lot sleeker visually. And I think it might actually work. And so I figured out how to control these linear servos. And then I worked out the inverse kinematics so that you can do this kind of thing. And let me tell you, this is way more trigonometry than you think it would be. I mean, this is one of those things that looks pretty simple and intuitive, but it's actually quite a lot of mathematics behind this. And then I needed some sort of structure to hold this relative to the guitar, so I went back to the laser cutter again, and I built this thing. And this thing is nice because it actually holds the finger a few millimeters above the surface of the guitar. One of the issues with the old plucking mechanisms is that those fingers are really loud and they're even louder when they're sitting directly on top of the guitar and nobody liked that. So this is kind of my answer to that. So anyway, then I figured out where the strings are relative to the finger, and this allows me to at least prove that this finger is capable of plucking each of the strings. So that's kind of a proof of concept. And then similarly, I can pluck the strings at different angles, which in principle might help allow different loudnesses. And yeah, so that's kind of as far as I've gotten so far. So that's where I am at the moment. And so it's clear, at least to me, that this new finger will allow for a greater range of expressive gestures, although it's also clear that I'm not quite there yet. Um, first of all, this finger needs another design iteration. There are some small mechanical problems left that I need to work out. And then the movement that I just showed you clearly doesn't have that much expression to it. It's kind of too fast and not I don't know, fancy enough. And so that's what I'm gonna work on next. And then the goal at some point in the future is to maybe do a follow-up study with human participants to see if this actually helps. Like if the robot uses these gestures in more of a kind of meaningful way, then does that help the way that people interact with it? Or do people like it more or synchronize with it better or find it more useful? than they did with the previous plucking mechanism. So anyway, I think that's all I have to say about that for now. If you have any questions, maybe leave a comment below and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. Anyway, I guess I'll see you next time. So bye.